Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Modern diesel cars produce more than twice as much toxic emissions as a lorry or bus of the same age, according to new analysis from the International Council on Clean Transportation. The report comes as one road in central London breached its legal air pollution limits for 2017, the whole of 2017, just five days into the new year. Other London roads are expected to breach the limits shortly. Our transport correspondent, Richard Westcott, reports. It doesn't seem to make sense. How can small diesel car engines be twice as polluting as the engines on 20-ton lorries and buses? This research comes from the same group that exposed VW cheating its emissions. So why do they think there's this huge difference between the latest cars and lorries? It's not about the technology because the exhaust after-treatment technology for cars and trucks is actually quite similar. It is more about the regulations and how the vehicles are being tested. Specifically for trucks, they are testing real trucks on the road under real-world driving conditions, whereas for cars, it is prototype vehicles only in the laboratory, and that makes a very big difference. The research focuses on the average amount of poisonous nitrogen oxides being produced. The latest lorries and buses belch out around 210 milligrams per kilometre. The latest cars produce more than twice that amount. And what's worse, cars can become six or seven times dirtier once they're taken out of the lab and put on the real road. Welcome to Brixton Road in London. It's just become famous for all the wrong reasons because it's become the first street in Britain to breach one of the European pollution laws for nitrogen dioxide, a poisonous gas from diesel engines. Thing is, this is an annual limit and it breached it in just five days. London's the worst, but many places all over Britain are breaking air quality laws. But this isn't really about cars, it's about the impact of pollution on our bodies. Those particles, in fact, not only get into the lungs, but also penetrate to the lungs and get into the blood circulation. And there they circulate to the rest of the body, and, and that's where you get effects of pollution on not only the lungs, but on the heart, um, on the brain, on the immune system. Car testing is about to get much tougher. New European rules are being rolled out from September, but they won't be fully in place until 2021, so it'll be years before the tests are as rigorous as they are for lorries. Richard Westcott, BBC News. As I mentioned earlier, pollution is already a problem in London just six days into the new year. But imagine leaving your house and seeing this. This is Beijing, which is currently experiencing one of the worst bouts of smog to hit the city in years. Here it comes down the road, reducing visibility to less than 200 metres. And it's not just China's capital that's been affected. A smog cloud 2,000 miles long is now blanketing cities from Beijing to Chengdu to Hunan province, leaving them on the highest alert for serious air pollution. Our China correspondent John Sudworth reports from Zhuang, which in the last month has become China's most polluted city. Somewhere Underneath this murky gloom is a city of 10 million people. And for the unfortunate residents of Zhuang, this is normal. For the past 30 days, the average air quality in this city has measured as hazardous on the official scale. You can smell, even taste the coal dust in the air, the grim tangible reality of this country's model of economic growth. And people have no choice but to live, eat and sleep in this toxic smog 24 hours a day. <laughs> it's like living under a cloud, this noodle seller tells me. The smog is harming my children's health. Of course I want to leave, this man says, but I can't afford to. And anyway, the whole country's polluted. It's not much of an exaggeration. 200 miles away, the pollution literally rolled into Beijing earlier this week and stayed. 
A toxic mix of coal dust from power stations and car exhaust. The smog now regularly blankets a huge swathe of northern China. And it's believed to cause more than a million premature deaths a year. Public concern has forced the Chinese government to begin investing heavily in renewable energy. Those working in the sector believe that China can clean up its air, just as wealthier, more developed economies once had to. I'm pretty positive for China's future. Actually, we don't need that much time for the science research. We don't need that much time to develop relevant technologies. So I think a lot of things are more ripe for us to make faster solutions. Those solutions can't come fast enough for this city. Fossil fuels may have lifted China's economy to ever greater heights, but they are poisoning its people. John Sudworth, BBC News, Xi Jiajuang. I've been